You're listening to Blue Please here on WoW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. Now, since I'm being pestered about it, I suppose I'll briefly mention why I seem to be a little bit reserved today, let me put it that way, and why there was not a show on Friday. I'll make it brief, folks. So, as you know, my wife has been in the States for the past year without me being there due to visa issues that are still not resolved. And getting her over here is also an issue due to certain other factors that are going to require a court order in order to sort out. I won't go into that. However, it's been pretty hard on all of us. Now, over the last couple of months, it became a lot harder because uh, Jen, also known as Ariana, my wife, has had dental issues. And these dental issues go back quite a way, but over the last few months, they've got very, very serious. She started to experience pain, the likes of which most people could never possibly imagine. Supposedly worse than childbirth, and she would know. And this was a result of the teeth and the dental issues. Now, getting dentistry in the United States is very difficult particularly when, as a result of the recession, you don't have a job. She's recently just got one, and congratulations to her for that. She's been battling for months to get a job, and she's finally managed it. At a good place as well. So, well done to her for that. But it got to the point where she was in so much pain that she couldn't talk. She had to do DIY dental surgery just to try and relieve the pain, which, of course, as you know, is extremely dangerous. And incredibly painful. Now... We heard of a free clinic that was opening for two days only, two and a half hours away, where she could go and get something sorted out. So she went there, went at 4.30 in the morning, that's when she started off, stood in the cold line with over 300 people for hours on end, and they were able to remove a single tooth. And they did so, they got rid of one of her wisdom teeth, which it turned out was abscessed. Those of you with any medical knowledge will be aware that abscesses aside from being very unpleasant, in the teeth can spread, had done so, spread to the jaw, infected the jaw, the cheek, and potentially, had that tooth not been removed, could have spread to the brain, which would have been lethal. And apparently this could have happened within months. So that was a bit of a shock, needless to say, and that knocked me and Jen on our asses for a while. But the clinic did not, for some reason, offer any painkillers or antibiotics. So by the time the local anaesthetic wore off, which thankfully was not while she was driving, she was in unbelievable agony because they had smashed her wisdom teeth apart quite literally. Just one wisdom tooth. Literally smashed it apart. That was the only way they could get it out. So after paying an absurd amount of money for painkillers from the ER, we're left with a situation. A dental surgery that would cost over $6,000 in the U.S., which is heartbreaking, quite frankly. And I don't want to get political, but this is too important an issue. This is dental care and healthcare in general. I'm sorry, but the state of healthcare in the US is an abomination. It it literally, in parts of the US, is like the third world. And there are doctors and dentists and all manner of medical professionals that will back that up. It is a disgrace. And it has to be resolved. I could go more into that, but this is a WoW show, so I won't. Now, thankfully, we've been able to find a dentist in the UK who is willing to do all the work gratis. An absolutely incredible man, I might add. An amazing, amazing individual. Anyone that's willing to go out of their way to help someone like that deserves all praise. And we're very humbled by his kindness and his willingness to help. Now, of course, that means that I get to see my wife again, which will be great. Uh, at the end of this month, in fact. Unfortunately, it also means that we're going to have to be getting a transatlantic flight, which is expensive, and not something that we can really fit into the budget right now. Now, we've done enough donation driving, so I'm not going to ask for money, but a lot of people were asking why this has happened, so I just wanted to let you know as to why I'm a little bit down, why I'm a little bit reserved, and have been under a lot of stress over the past few days, and of course, Jen has been in a lot of pain, so that's... Not really something that I could feel right going on the air and being all happy-go-lucky and ranty. Yeah, when that's been happening. But there is the end in sight. There was light at the end of the tunnel, thankfully. 
and we just got to soldier onto that. So thank you to everyone that sent letters of support via Twitter, via email. There were an awful lot of you. That is very much appreciated. There were a couple of people who decided that this was going to be turned into either a political issue or a personal issue against me and Jen. And those people know who they are. And quite frankly, will eventually get what they deserve, no doubt. We shall see. Not very nice individuals. Anyway, that's that out of the way. So let me talk about something a little bit more positive. I feel a bit better now I've got that off my chest. It, it's unfortunate that I have to even mention it on the show, but a lot of people asked, and it's difficult to deal with it without talking about it, unfortunately. And you know what? I don't have money for a therapist, so you're just going to have to deal with it. You are my therapy, folks. And hopefully I yours at times. God, that's a scary thought. Right, let's talk about something positive. Yes, positive stuff. I have for you some information, which you will find on MMOChampion.com. Head over there right now. MMO-Champion.com. That's the place to look. That is the place to look. There has been some information released about what's going to be happening in 3.3, and there are two interesting points that seem unrelated. However... My mind being the crazy thing that it is, and really not working correctly, has managed to link the two together. It's kind of like square peg round hole. I just keep ramming at it until it eventually goes in, and then I proclaim that, yes, it was designed to go in there. That was a match made in heaven. Like peanut butter and chocolate, which is disgusting, I might add. Heresy. Right. Cross-faction, BOE, item mailing. Not BOE, BOA. You may be aware of the system of heirloom items. I would certainly hope that you are. It allows you to purchase an item with badges. Certain kinds of badges. Some of them are Stonekeeper Shards, I believe. Is that what they're called? I certainly hope so. So I know TBC had something like that, didn't it? And I, I, do, I do worry that I'm getting all of my currencies mixed up. You can also buy them for various different flavors of badge. And these items scale with level. And that's great, because you can roll an alt up and you can have an Arcanite Reaper from level 1, and it'll level up with you. They're generally very powerful. They generally do not need to be replaced until level 80, so they speed up the leveling process. They make it something a little bit more enjoyable, and they encourage one to roll an alt, which, of course, I'm not going to do, but whatever. It's actually not true. I'll be rolling a Troll Druid, assuming it gets Vorpal Tinker form. Blizzard, you heard me. So, for a while, there have been complaints misunderstandings, as it were, as to the nature of a bind-on-account item, which heirloom items are, as are various other things, and it's that you cannot mail them to the opposite faction. Now, anyone that thought you could is perhaps not thinking clearly. The reason, of course, being that you've never been able to mail anything to the opposing faction. So why do you think you'd suddenly be able to do that now? It's... It's a complex issue. There's a great big analogy on the EU forums, I believe, in my FAQ as it happens. And various other places that have repeatedly justified this. But Blizzard has finally decided that, yes, this should be okay. And, to be honest, I would agree with it. In 3.3, this is a quote from Rixian, who says, There is good news, and if you patiently wait for patch 3.3, you will probably be rewarded with the very thing you are requesting. That's right, we aim to implement the ability to exchange bind-on-account items between your Horde and Alliance characters in Fatch... Fatch? What? <laughs> Fatch! Free... <laughs> uh, I need alcohol. Vodka, perhaps. Patch 3.3. Of course, as with anything not yet live, and even things that are, they are subject to change, but it is currently our intention. Hope this helps somewhat, or rather hope that that will help somewhat. What? Stop talking, Rixian. Blithering. Right. That's very good. I mean, how could you object to that? I certainly don't. I've never been one for alts, but if I were, heirloom items would be something I'd definitely go for. There's a lot of nostalgia involved in heirloom items. I'd like to see a second tier of heirloom items, perhaps tier 1. That would be nice. You brought back some tier 2 items, so let's see some tier 1 again. I want my Arcanist belt! You can get the Mage Blade, as I recall. Actually, no. Is it the Mage Blade? You can get something. You can, get, you can get the Headmaster's Charge, I know that. I think you can get a one-hander spell as well. I'm not sure which, though. I know there's, there's a Mage Blade available from Anixia these days. And the Fang of the Mystics. Now, I would be interested in these kind of things, and I would think that this is a very good idea. Now, there was another announcement. 
something perhaps unrelated. And it says this. This is on the subject of emblems of triumph in heroics. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to go too far into this. You've heard it before. It's from Bornak. He says this. While we have changed the emblem system several times since the inception of Badges of Justice back in the Burning Crusade, we feel that this is currently a good way to go, so players aren't forced to just run old content like Naxxramas for two months to work their character up to do higher level slash new content. Okay. Now, who is that valid for? How many times have I made the argument that a new player does not need new content because everything is new to a new player? Perfectly logical, right? Now, that does not apply, of course, to existing players who are rolling alts, and I can see why the frustration would lie in giving up such a character. It's tricky, you don't want to do it again. Makes perfect sense. So, this is their solution. And, as always, with Blizzard, it is ineloquent. It's clumsy. It's crude. It causes more damage than it solves. It's surgery with a sledgehammer, folks. That's what it is. Sure, it might get the job done, but it'll be a bloody mess at the end of it. So it falls to me, in my arrogance, to come up with something better. I reckon I can. I have an idea. Now, you remember I said I wanted to link these two posts together, and you're wondering, well, Total Biscuit, have you truly lost it? Perhaps I have. I have an idea. So, here's the problem. Here's the situation. Problem. Alts have to, at least without the badges, would have to run through Naxxramas and all of the old stuff that they've done a million times before in order to gear up and order to do the high-level stuff. That's bad. Yes, absolutely. Bad. Waste of time. Guild hate doing it. So, their implementation, Triumph Badges. Triumph Badges from Heroics, easier to get. You can gear up a lot quicker. You can get back with your alt. Say you want to change your character class. You want to roll an alt, get your alt up and get going. Then you can do it that way. If your guild's not doing the low-level content anymore, no problem. You can do that. Okay. And that's their solution to it. Well, their solution is in ineloquent, folks. It doesn't work. It's not good. It breaks a lot of things. It ruins the progression path. New players don't need it. New players should be seeing the new content, surely. And by the new content, of course, for new players, I'm talking about all of it. They should see all of the content. Why should a new player mix out, miss out on Naxxramas? Old while, one of the best instances they've ever designed. Still should be two instances, but whatever. TOC, well, I'm sure they can miss out on that. It's rubbish. Why should they have to miss out on all of that? That doesn't make any sense, surely. So, there's your two camps. Your alts, your new players. Both have different goals. Both need different things. How can you reconcile it? I have a solution. How about... You use heirloom items to do this. Now you might say, well, Total Biscuit, this is nonsense. Heirloom items are no good at this level. They're not even comparable to Ray Gear. And of course you would be correct in that assumption. So, okay, why don't we make them comparable to Ray Gear? And then you say, Total Biscuit, this is nonsense. How dare you do this? You should not be advocating Ray Gear from badges. You've said it thousands of times before on your show. It's a terrible idea. How dare you? How dare you desert us like this? Betray our sensibilities. Well, dear sir, how about this? A second tier of heirloom items. Crafted heirloom items. Using items that are BOP. And when I say crafted, I am talking about BOP crafting in general. As in, you cannot make it for somebody else. It is bind on account crafting. So therefore, if one wants to get their alt up into the higher level content straight away, they must have already done the higher level content on their main. In order to get these items. That will allow you to bring the alt straight into the raid game at the level appropriate for them and not have to repeat the boring content. That's how you do it. Alum items with BOP drops from high-level instances that require in order to make the actual item itself. And you yourself are the only one that can make the item. You can't buy it off of somebody else. And that's how you get it. Now, that provides a adequate two-tier solution without breaking the progression path. The new players run the old content, and they say old, it's not old to them, it's brand new. They should be able to run that. They should be encouraged to run that. That's the best way to learn. You don't want to throw them into all this high-level content because they'll just cry for nerves. And then, of course, that ruins the high-level content for everybody else. However, if you were to introduce raid heirlooms, 
then you would allow those mains who have progressed far in the game to gear their ults up quickly. They would not need this ridiculous badge system. They would not need to break the entire progression curve in order to get the ridiculous badge system and benefit all of the other players who do not deserve that level of gear. It's proper stratification of the player base, folks. That is how you do it. That's how you fix it. Go on, Blizzard. Give it a shot. You listen to Blue Please here on WoW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. I am unfortunately a little bit too tired to do the Murloc today. I promise you he will return next show. We'll come back after the break with the Illusion of Choice. Enjoy. <laughs> 